So the first thing we're going to do is create a new project called Pet Shop or Pet Store, whatever you want. Okay? You're going to create a project called Pet Shop. After that, we're going to go to our 20, week 21. It's, it started, this activity started on week 21, but it takes week 21 and week 22. We're going to do it this week. In week 21, there's a, there's a section called Propose It. 21.3a called Propose It. And it says, download the SIP Pet Shop project files. That's what we're going to do. You're going to download the Pet Shop project files. It is a zip file that contains all these classes. It contains abstract pets, chihuahua, dog, pets, pet shop, pet shop, snake, and other stuff. So let's download it as a zip file. And we are going to put all those Java files in the project, okay? Show in folder. I am going to extract the files from this from this archive. So we're gonna grab all those files from the pet shop after you extract them and put them into the folder or project called pet shop on your okay so you're gonna grab only the ones that have the dot java okay let's look at the java files so we have abstract pets which is gonna be our abstract class we have chihuahua dog pets pet shop snake okay here we can make an example of all the things that we've learned last week and this week so I'm going to drag and drop them into my SRC folder. There's the pet shop. Okay. Okay. So let's start. Let's start with the abstract pets. Let's open the abstract pets first of all. Guys, how do you know that this is an abstract class? Public abstract class, abstract pets. Why is pets an abstract class? What, what do you think? What do you think abstract pets or why a pet can be, is an abstract class? It's a, exactly, it's a generalization of something. If I say pet, if I say pet, you cannot say the shape, you cannot specify what is a pet because it's a concept. That's why you create an abstract class. Now the abstract class, remember, it can have in instance variables, right? It can have methods, right and it can have public methods that are going to be shared among all the other classes right you can use and find the name of all the pets by using the abstract class abstract pets you don't have to call it each one understand now every single pet as you see here can speak and can move. That's what we learned about abstract classes. Every pet can speak and move, right? That's why you call it abstract public string speak and abstract public string move. Now let's look at pets. Let's open pets. Pets is going to be our driver class. As you can see, you have the void, main, the void main in pets. So the void main is the one that runs. 
So here I can create a couple of things that I'll show you in a minute when we talk about polymorphism. I create objects of different classes here and I can um, create some others and play with the method, okay? So every single pet is what? It's an extension of what? Of the class abstract pets. Now pets is our driver class, okay? Pets is the driver, okay? Is the app. But every single class has to be an extension of pets, of, of abstract pets. Let's open dog. Now I want you to look at dog for a second. Public class dog extends abstract pets, right? Because a dog is a what? Is a pet. Now a dog contains instance variables like weight, right? It contains a constructor method, the way that you create a dog, okay? And it has a couple of methods like get weight, like to string, like speak, like move, etc. Are we clear? So a dog uses all these methods. Remember that when we created abstract methods, these methods did not have um, brackets. Why are these methods, these abstract methods, not with brackets? Why? Yeah, and w what does that mean? Exactly. Thank you very much. Each of these methods has to be mandatory, has to be defined, have to be defined inside each of the classes that it, it extends. So if I extend abstract pets, I have to create at least the method speak and the method move. Another abstract method would be eat because every single pet eats, right? So let's add another abstract method. Eat. Okay? We created a new abstract method called eat because I need to implement the way they eat in each class. If I go to dog, I must create, you see? The type dog must implement the inherited abstract method abstractpets.eat. You see, right away, I get an error in dog because it's telling me, you look, you have to inherit, you have to inherit the method eat, otherwise it's not gonna work. So somewhere here, I need to create and implement eat, okay? I don't know, and I'll say return I eat uh, pedigree. So now I, now it works. Every time that I create an abstract method in the abstract class, I must create or implement that method in the, in the, in, extended in the extended one, okay? Now let's open Chihuahua. Now look at this relationship. A Chihuahua is a dog. But since Chihuahua is a dog, it is also a pet, okay? So that is very important. So Chihuahua will inherit all the methods from pet but it will inherit all the methods from dog. Okay? Got it? So, in dog, what if in dog I create a method called public string bark 
because all dogs bark. So I think in dog, I can create a method that says bark. The way they bark is different. So public string bark. But I want this method to be implemented where? In the dog class. In, the, in each dog. So this is something called overwriting. It's different from abstract methods. So here, I'm going to say return wolf. Because it's a generalization of how dogs bark. But a chihuahua barks in a different way. Since it barks in a different way, I can create a method that overwrites my method okay because it's a chihuahua right so even though I have the method the method bark on the dog uh, class and I have the the method bark in the chihuahua if I'm using a chihuahua, I will bark like a chihuahua. That's what I'm trying to say. This is called overriding. Okay. Now let's open. Uh, okay, so we have, guys, we have a dog. We have uh, set place. This is a mutator where you put the location. You have speak. You have move. Uh, you have city of origin. Okay, and you have bark. This one is overriding the, the method from the dog uh, class. Now let's open snake. A snake is an animal, right? So it extends abstract pets. What is the error in snakes? In snake? That we have not created a method called what? Public string eat. Okay? If we don't create it, it's not going to work. Okay? Or mice. As you can see, speak is implemented in the snake, move is also implemented in the snake, and eat because they're abstract, they're abstract methods, okay? I want you to look at the constructor method for a second. The constructor of snake says super snake name, okay? The constructor requires a name and a number, the length, okay? It requires a name, a string, and it requires a number, which is the length of the snake. That's how you create a snake. Now the name, I'm actually creating a pet, right? So I can use the word super, and the word super says, go and find a constructor of the super class, which is abstracts pets, and use that name. So he creates a pet. Okay? He's actually creating a pet. So guys, abstract pets, even though it's an abstract class, it may or not have a constructor method. Okay? You can create an object from abstract pets, but usually abstract classes do not create directly objects. You, you shouldn't create objects from an abstract class. Are we clear? You do not instantiate an object from an abstract class. You create objects from normal classes. Are we clear? So snake uses the word super to create a pet because he's creating a pet. Are we clear? Got it?
If you go to the driver, if you go to pets, this driver creates a dog, and this is where polymorphism acts. Polymorphism is the possibility to create an object from a class, right, with the attributes of another class. For example, I'm going to create a dog called uh, Pepe. But this dog, but this dog is a what? A Chihuahua. Right? So the name is Pepe, and it requires a what? Um, the weight. Okay? Got it? So I created a dog, but it's a Chihuahua. This is polymorphism. Okay? The cool thing about this is that I can create, I can create polymorphic, I can create polymorphic arrays. What if I wanted an array of dogs, but inside the dog I can have Chihuahuas, I can have German Shepherds, I can have a bunch. So I can do all that using polymorphism. Polymorphism allows me to create polymorphic arrays. An array with multiple objects. Guys, remember that once I told you that an array has to be of the same type? Always? Well, polymorphism allows kind of like creating arrays with multiple objects, but they have things in common. So I can create a dog array Right? Called dog R. And I can say a new dog array of five. Okay? Now check this out. I can create in position zero. Right? I can say new chihuahua. Okay? And look, I created a chihuahua inside a dog array, right? But I can also create a, do a general dog in position one called Bernard. And it will allow me to create a dog a general dog, a chihuahua, and if I have more subclasses like German Shepherd and other classes, I can put them in the same array. Do you, now you understand the importance of polymorphism. Okay? Are we clear? Okay.